not the a-hole for not wanting to celebrate my mom on my birthday. I have three siblings between the ages of 10 and 18. I'm the oldest, fourth at 25. Every year on every single one of our birthdays, we're expected to celebrate my mom as well. We've done it since we were little. It was taught to me as giving thanks for caring plus giving birth to us, which I'm all for. I'm grateful as we wouldn't be here without her. The issue is though, it becomes less of our birthday and more so an anniversary for the day our mom gave birth. Every year on our birthday, our mom gets gifts too. As we got older, we're now expected to get her monetary gifts and not cards or homemade stuff. Just recently was my birthday and I was gifted some much needed clothes and dishware for my new apartment. My dad however got my mom a new MacBook. My siblings all got her gifts too. My youngest brother isn't expected to give much, but my 16-year-old sister and 18-year-old second brother work so they're expected to give gifts too. My sister pulled me aside before my birthday and said she was sorry she couldn't get me much. She got me a sweater, I love it, and that she wanted to get me more but our mom was pressuring her to get a certain necklace for our mom. Apparently, my mom had been dropping hands for a month, and my sister was worried our mom would be upset and feel underappreciated if she didn't get it. I asked how much it was, and my sister said it was $300. I honestly lost it on our mom, and chewed into her later that afternoon when my mom opened her gifts after me. I think she's ridiculous for even wanting my sister to spend so much on a gift. Mom started crying and my dad kicked me out. Mom won't answer calls, but my aunt, mom's sister, called and said I was a POS for not respecting my mother, and that I'm a selfish, narcissist child for being jealous of the gifts mom got. I thought I was in the right, but now I don't know. It's been over two weeks and mom won't answer my calls. She's been posting on Facebook inspiration quotes about letting go of toxicity in your life, how blood doesn't equal family and how hard it is to be a mother. Several family members, aunt, grandma, uncle, and two of my cousins are replying to the posts and are very obviously directing vague comments at me about being a horrible daughter. I don't know what to think now because of how many people are on her side. Now for the top comments before the little update. Not day home. It was her choice to carry four children and give birth to them. Your mother sounds self-centered and selfish. As far as toxicity in one's life and how blood doesn't equal family, I think you should apply that to your mother, not you. For once, Opie's mother is perfectly correct. Remove toxicity from your life, dear Opie. Blood doesn't equal family. Opie's mom is dripping with entitlement. Five birthdays a year? $300 gifts? What's wrong with her? Out of curiosity, is this practice carried up the ladder to the next generation? Does grandma get presents on mom's birthday? This is a weird tradition that I have never heard of. Though it is important to note that while my mom does give gifts to my grandma on Mother's Day, she doesn't have to keep the same birthday traditions as us. On my mom's birthday, she doesn't give her mom anything, like we're expected to. Because one, my parents couldn't afford it after having so many kids and having money tied up in that. And two, because my grandma views us grandkids as a lifelong gift instead. I'm assuming my mom would also no longer expect a gift on my birthday if I had kids. But jokes on her, that's never going to happen. Not stay home. However, your mom though. Holy crap, Bucket. How the hell can you feel entitled to a $300 gift from your kid at 18 at expecting five birthdays a year? Your mom and your enabling family are messed up. I would have cut them off ASAP. Maybe leave an olive branch for your siblings if they want to run at some point as well. I'm 18, and if someone asks for a $300 gift from me, there's no way I would be able to pay for it. Edit. Thank you for all your feedback. I think it's really eye-opening, and I'm going to try to find a therapist so I can unload all this mess. Next story. Am I the a-hole for keeping my son from my mother-in-law after she tried to force a paternity test? Some background. Me, 28 female, and my fiancé, 34 male, have a blended family. He has two daughters from his previous marriage, ages 9 and 7, and I have a son from a past relationship, age 6. Shortly after the birth of his second daughter, my fiancé had a vasectomy. He and I also have a five-month-old baby boy. His conception came as a shock to us both, and my fiancé had a sperm count done. 
Wallo, he had some viable ones. We love our son, and I couldn't imagine life without him. But my fiance's mom has made life hell. When she found out I was pregnant, she tried to convince him I cheated and said he shouldn't live with me until after the birth, and he should get a paternity test. She did her own research and said it was too unlikely that we'd conceive after a vasectomy, and a more obvious choice was that I was unfaithful. My fiancé shot this down, but mother-in-law said she refused to acknowledge our son until we get a test. I said, fine, he doesn't need you. She didn't come to our shower, the hospital for the birth, or even send a card. We haven't got the test done and don't plan to. Our son looks just like his dad when he was a baby. My mother-in-law caught wind that my parents have visited the baby recently. They live across the country and can't visit often because COVID. And is furious. She suddenly wants to be an involved grandma. And that I'm keeping her from her only grandson. And that most women would kill to have involved grandparents. I told her she needs to apologize and I need time to forgive. But she's given non-apology saying she was just trying to protect her son. And I'd do the same if I were in her shoes. No, sorry, no baby. Fiance is getting uncomfortable with our fighting and picking sides. He is with me that she's been unacceptable, but says she'll never really apologize and I need to compromise, or this will never end. I've heard from other people that I need to be the bigger person. I'm honestly tired of the arguments too, but I can't forgive her accusation so easily. Half of his family thinks I'm a catty cheater because of her. You absolutely do not need to be the bigger person here. I swear, that is a phrase created by people who don't want to take accountability for being abusive. Tell your fiancé that she has overstepped and that is not okay to pressure you into doing anything. If she's been like this once, something like this will happen again. She's literally defamed your entire character over an innocent situation with no regard to how it affected you. And your fiancé isn't taking this seriously enough either. Not stay home. And jellyfish enablers who enable and minimize other people's bad behavior. It's easier to make the victim apologize and be the bigger person than make a toxic person act decently. The husband needs to be a buffer between his mom and his partner. His mom has never apologized because people let her get away with bad behavior. Sometimes I hate enablers just as much as abusers, especially those who enable child abuse. Not stay home. Not day whole, but make sure you and fiancé really are on the same page about this. Or we'll be seeing a follow-up later where he's letting mother-in-law around your baby without your knowledge. Not day home. The mother-in-law refused to acknowledge her grandson and is now making a surprised Pikachu face that you followed through and refused to acknowledge her as a grandmother. I mean, I can understand how she would be suspicious. But A, if your fiancé decided that it's his son, then it's his son, whether blood-related or not. And she should have had enough grace to, at least, respect her own son's decision. B. If she was that suspicious, she should have voiced her concerns to him in private, without making it a spectacle and making your life hell for the duration of your pregnancy. Instead, she decided to be nasty about it, and is now shocked that you hate her guts. What a surprise! Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for turning down a family vacation because I would have to pay and my sister wouldn't? My 28 female parents are organizing a family holiday abroad and have approached me stating that they will be paying for my sister's 30 female holiday but not mine. This is because to them I can afford it and she cannot and that is the only way we would all be able to go on vacation together. They couldn't pay for us both. That's their money, and they can do as they wish with it. And that I'm in a good spot financially right now, and my sister isn't. If I ever find myself in a bad spot, they will help me out. But to me, it's not that simple. I am more financially stable than my sister because I have chosen to live in a cheaper area, despite being further from my friends. Followed a career path where financial security is guaranteed, and always live well within my means. Whereas my sister has followed a career path which is, unfairly, I admit, underpaid, insisted on living close to her friends despite the high rent, and likes to spend more money on her lifestyle. My parents think the crux of it is that I am lucky that my passion lines up with a well-paid job, and my sister is unlucky that her passion does not, so my sister deserves more help due to that bad luck. They also think that I'm lucky to have a partner that I could move away to a cheaper area with. And my sister, who doesn't currently have a serious partner, isn't lucky in that respect. 
so it would be a greater deal to move away from her friends and therefore get unlucky. Again, they insist if the tables turn and our fortunes are reversed, they would help me out. Am I the a-hole for refusing this holiday and choosing one of my friends at the same time instead? If the money thing wasn't there, I would probably have chosen this family holiday. But I just feel like my frugal decisions are now being punished, and this is unfair. I'm not angling for my parents to pay for me too. And I also feel bad kind of suggesting, indirectly, my sister pay for hers. But I still feel really hard done by, and that my sister is being cuddled. And the fact that she spends quite a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, much more than me, is being rewarded. My parents and sister think I'm being money hungry. It's not very compassionate to my sister's unlucky love life and underpaid profession. This is stopping us from going on vacation, all four of us, which is upsetting my parents. Am I the a-hole? Edit. People keep accusing me of judging my sister's spending. I'm not judging it at all. I think it's great she goes out and has a good time. We're just different. But at the end of the day, I'm still being asked to spend more than her on the same things. It makes my sacrifices not feel worth it. It's more a comment on the saving I do to be able to afford this holiday, rather than exactly what she slash isn't doing in order to not afford it. Added to, my solution to this problem isn't to insist she pays and either bankrupts herself or doesn't go. I don't want that at all. We would never go without her if she couldn't afford it. So please stop telling me that's my ideal solution. I think we should find a cheaper holiday, or move the holiday back if she wants time to save or prioritize it over another holiday next year. I also would be fine if the money on each of us was proportional to salary, so that I wasn't made to feel like my frugality was for nothing as that would be irrelevant. Now for the comments. Not day home. It's their money to spend how they like it on who they want, just like it's your money to spend how you want and who you want. You made your choices to live within your earning bracket, while your sister, from your words, chooses to live above her means, knowing the income is there. Let them go on a vacation together, while you go vacation with friends. This. Also, be you can say you'll be more than happy to pay your way, on a holiday you want, where you want to go and do what you want to do. Remind your parents that like them, you can spend your money how you please. Right here. If you're expected to pay your way and use your vacation time, it should be your vacation. It's pretty ballsy to decide the whole family must come to a specific vacation, but decide one kid gets to foot their own bill. That's regardless of them paying for the other child. That makes it so much worse. Not stay home. You pay for your vacation, you pick your vacation. Not stay home in my opinion. Why can't your parents pay half for you and half for your sister? Then you both pay the remainder and it's fair. Your job security slash financial security has nothing to do with us. They're just using it as an excuse. To make it fair, I tell them to pay half for each. Or the three of them can go on holiday and you'll do something else. No a-holes here. Your parents can do what they want with their money, even if it feels unfair to you. They seem to have this well thought through, and to me, the reasoning seems sound. You, however, have every right to feel a bit hard done by particularly as you feel your sister is partially responsible for her lack of funds. If you feel you'd enjoy a holiday with your friends more than a family holiday, there is nothing a hollish about choosing not to go with your family, as long as you are doing it for that reason, and not just out of spite and childishness. Now for the last story. Am I the a hall for refusing to babysit for my sister? My female 19, sister 32, Mary, and her husband 28, John, have twins, a boy and a girl, both 10 months old. My parents were ecstatic when they found out she was pregnant as the twins were their first grandchildren, and my sister had been struggling with getting pregnant for a while. I was happy for my sister and John, but I couldn't help wondering how they were going to handle this financially. They're in quite a bit of a debt, and both work long hours. My question was answered a few weeks ago when we had a big family dinner. Me, parents, Mary, John, brother Mike, 21, brother Josh, 25, and his wife Sophie, 27. My sister announced she will be returning to work in two weeks, so they were gonna need everyone to chip in and babysit and to help out financially. I'm not gonna lie, I was shocked when I heard this because it sounded a bit ridiculous that they expect everyone to babysit their kids for free and to give them money for their debts. Mary went around the table asking everyone when they could watch the twins, so she could draw up a roster and how much money they could spare. Everyone was contributing, and Sophie was even talking about trying to move her work shifts around so that she could babysit. 
I'm a full-time college student and I have a part-time job at a bakery, so I really have no time nor cash to spare. I'm also not great with kids. I literally have absolutely no idea how to take care of them. When Mary got around to me, she said she thought I could do the most hours since I was only in college and didn't have any serious commitments. Her whole attitude kind of annoyed me, and I told her I wasn't going to babysit her kids or going to chip in money-wise, and that it was her decision to have kids, so it's her responsibility. The room went silent and my sister started crying, and everyone started giving out to me for being selfish. And my mom said that in our family would take care of each other. I left the dinner because everyone was so mad at me and demanding I apologize. I agree that maybe I was a little blunt with her. It may be I should have offered to babysit once or twice, but I don't think I'm completely in the wrong. My family's still pissed at me and my parents are demanding I not only apologize to Mary and John, but write them a check to help them out. I have like $70 in my bank account, so that's not gonna happen. I want to apologize for being rude, but I know they're still gonna expect help. Am I the a-hole? Not stay home. But they are asking for is ridiculous. And them expecting you to do more because you're in college is just absurd. If the parents of these children really are in debt like Opie said, then a baby should be the last thing on their mind. I think it is just unfair for a child to be brought up in an environment like that. If they can't look after the baby, then they shouldn't even be raising the baby. I think adoption should have been an option here. I'm a full-time college student and I have a part-time job at a bakery, so I really have no time nor cash to spare. Opie should have just said this. This is enough reason why she doesn't want to babysit. Using her college student status to leech is just incredibly entitled. Opie not stay home. They are being ridiculous. They're having kids they aren't financially ready for. They want others to help out financially at their, others, expense. They're pushing their responsibilities onto other people. They decided this unilaterally. They demand help from people who can't give it. They used your college student status as an excuse to leech, dismissing your commitments and decisions. They don't respect your no. You're right that it should be enough if Opie were dealing with reasonable people. But Opie's family aren't being reasonable. In fact, they cited Opie being a college student as a reason they could do more babysitting. 